dead silent. Yeah. Um, so instead of saying that, I'll just write briefly. Um, came by hoping to talk about Amelia. We are staying here. If you would like to come by, I want to find Casey. Something to that effect that like is so easy for Amelia to just do, 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 yeah. do, do. Um, and then slide that with a card under the door. Yeah. Um, look around. This block seem oddly empty to you. No. What do you mean empty? Hmm. I'm just not hearing anything. I suppose they could have headed out early though. Wait, the the block? I mean, they're not answering. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I'll go and knock on the next house over. Pretty much the same thing. You hear the you hear the rattling of a locked chain, but no response from inside. <sighs> I I think this was answered for us, but I'll I'll ask Nina because she's local. Mostly people run their own boats or they do they work for a specific company? And they're give me a uh Nina can give me a history check. Okay, yeah. I probably don't know this. This is not what I did. Yeah. You pretty much stayed on the south side of town the entire time you were here. Yeah, I I didn't go out here very often. Um, I was mostly up at the school studying. Um, I think so. That's Let's fair. see if um, I'm trying to actually um, because uh, there are neighbors around and they're leaving as well. I'm gonna try and flag someone who looks like they might be interested in who we are because we're you know we just drove a car down and parked and walked give out. Me a, give me a give me a. Give me a psychology roll. Let's see if you can spot someone that looks like they might be interested in talking more than yep. others. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'll do that as well because con artists. That's kind of my gimmick. Hey, I got a critical success. Yes, you did. Oh, well, never mind. Go for that. Oh, uh, actually, for both for both of your critical successes, by the way, you both get to uh, roll, a, a, roll a D3 and add that to your sanity. Because critical oh, successes cool. can restore your sanity. D... You're so good at doing something, it's reassuring. Yeah. <laughs> I like the mechanic. So oh, 1D3. Oh, hang on. Did I not do that right? Slash roll. <laughs> yes, you have to slash roll 1D3. 1D3. There we go. Two. <coughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, you look around. Um, not only do you see someone who looks like they'd probably be interested in talking to you, you see somebody who looks like they probably will start talking to you if you get within 10 feet of them. Uh, there is this... The best word... The best way to describe this person is you look at them and instinctually you know their name is Bubba. You don't know how you know their name is Bubba. Beautiful. But they are a Bubba. Okay. Just this, you know, fairly overweight, uh, older, light skin, fair skin, uh, indivi- masculine looking individual, uh, with a mullet and, uh, and just a fishing hat on with some fish hooks stuck into mm-hmm. it, uh, mm-hmm. wearing a vest, wearing a vest, like sort of a fisherman's vest, no shirt on underneath, gut hanging over the pants. Fairly well, uh, fairly well muscled in the arms. Like you're, you're looking at it's not just it's not just fat. There's also a uh, plenty of muscle there too. Um, wearing very well worn pants and boots, and just sort of leaning against a wall, chewing. And you know it's chewing tobacco. Again, you don't mm-hmm. have to get close. You know that's chewing tobacco. Yeah. Um, and as you sort of, just sort of watching. I'll head on over. I'm out of there neighbors. Hello. Uh, I am detective Nina Thomas. I will show my badge. Yeah, I, I right. And just about right. And I ain't never met a detective before. Nice to meet you. Uh, I was just wondering, we wanted to ask Cassandra's parents some questions. She's gone missing and we're very concerned. Oh, which they don't seem to be in. Little Cassie's gone missing, has she? Oh, that's strange. Don't 
much get that around here. Uh, ben and them. Have you seen the wins recently? No, nah, Ben and them ain't been around for whew, a couple of days. That pretty typical? No, nah, Ben's normally out here on the boat with the rest of us doing some uh, checking out the nets and the, and the crawfish traps, but you know. Did he tell anyone he needed a few days off? Or no, we sort of a we sort of a work as you can get it kind of folk out here, you know. So you know, nobody Fair really had nobody punches a clock in Fish Town. Got it. Was he the type to take time off? Everybody takes time off sometime. Fair. You know, either you take time off during your life, or you take time off when you hit the grave. <laughs> He thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. And a couple days ago, that would... I'm trying to think of the timeline of when things... Would that have been before or after? Uh, that would have been after. That Professor would have been Deal. after Professor Deal has disappeared. After. Okay. In... The couple weeks before, because Cassandra was the first one to go missing, if I'm remembering right. Yes. Um, in the couple weeks before, were did they ever talk about? It? You seem surprised that Cassandra has, Cassie has yeah, mostly gone just, missing. They both. hadn't talked about it to any of you before. People no. in Fishtown, people in Fishtown, you know, up and disappear as they please, but they're never really gone missing. They just sort of left on their own so for someone to describe it as missing is the part that's intriguing to me at least fair enough i suppose it's just different way of saying things fair enough Did they have any neighbors yeah that whole block full of oak <laughs> seen any of them around i'm up on the boat some of them not you know, don't really keep track of most folk. Only reason I know about Ben is because we're on the same boat. Fair enough. Um, can I do an insight check on this person? Sure, give me a psychology roll. I'd like to try that too. Go ahead. Oh, nice. This, or hard success. this individual is being completely truthful. Amelia, they are being completely truthful, but they are not surprised to be asking these questions, to be, to be being asked these questions. Right. Does that give me any idea of better questions to ask? Give me an idea roll. Thanks. Yeah, they've probably been questioned by the police before this. So it do it doesn't give you any idea of any better questions to ask. It does sort of give you the feeling you're familiar with this kind of a system. Um, in 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 sort of in 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 lower income and in in harder like societal areas, uh, there is sort of an unspoken system of guards. Uh, people that sort of keep a watch out for strangers that might mean harm to the community, for cops, for uh, anybody that might need to have somebody talked to. Yeah, uh, the and, people you need on side if you're doing. Yeah, talk. yeah. In the in 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 boroughs, you know, like 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 uh, in in Hispanic boroughs, it's the kids, and they'll you know they'll run around just you know sort of making bird noises and things to sort of alert the people that might not be doing legal activities that there are cops around or strangers mm -hmm. around um that you, you you sort of get this type of individual in many different places and here it seems sort of a, a bubba type person is it's the it. one that would be put of uh, put forward for the for the cops to talk to so that it doesn't seem like nobody's around but the people that don't want to talk to the law enforcement don't have to talk to the law enforcement. Fair enough. Well, that's fair. And, um, and they're characterized as answering all questions truthfully, but not giving you anything more than the truth. Yeah. Whatever that is. 
Um, Yeah, he's not going to be so helpful, but come on, thank you. Especially not with me here. <laughs> you might have I feel bad because, because I feel like this is the sort of thing I should be good at with this character. I'm just not. Um, uh, and you know that having having spotted having spotted you with the cop, definitely now like neither one of you can like yeah. could like get in as a local or anything like that. Yeah, I I don't think Amelia necessarily passes as local anyway because once you're past a certain age you haven't been here before yeah you're too old to be new yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, either one of you can make an idea roll again though for a different idea this is not sure. for additional sure. questions, but for something else. Before I'm just like, let me end this conversversation. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so you, uh, you could but I you could ask for directions to the bar that um, right yeah. in the bar that um, Robin frequented, uh, who his name escapes my mind at the moment. Ah. Uh, 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 was... Something fisherman. The yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Pickled Irishman. The pickled Irishman. That's it. So you could ask. You could ask for directions to the pickled Irishman, uh, or you could also sort of ask for. You could potentially uh, see about in you know inspecting the docks and just sort of seeing how people go about their day to day. That yeah. might give you some insight as to where they might have gone or what might have happened. <sighs> Well, um, all right. Um, any chance you know where the pickled Irishman might be? Oh yeah, uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be Flynn's establishment. Now you just have to step over here onto the docks, uh, head west across, head west down the river. It won't be hard to spot once you're on the dock side. Tell tell Flynn Bubble Ray says hi. All right. Uh, and if you run into any of the winds, especially Cassandra, just let them know we're around. I'll pass him my card. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Um, we just want people to stop going missing. Absolutely. Um, I'll... No, we're we're gonna head down the docks. And anyway. and I'm gonna err on the side of most of the time it's better to know the cops are looking for you than to not know. So he's probably likely to pass something like that along. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll I'll just follow Amelia um down to the docks. As you as you walk past the buildings heading towards the dock, you're a little ways away, you hear from behind you. Hey, I'll be careful down there. Some of the fish get real big and like to bite. And you hear just a chuckling laugh of some sort of, some sort of you know own joke, uh, as Bubba heads off in a different direction. Hmm. As we're going along the docks, I'm looking at the boats to see if if how many or if any of these seem like ones that might have been down at the river last night. Sure. Go ahead and give me a spot hidden or a um a spot hidden or an appraisal check. I'll do spot hidden because I'm real bad at appraisal. Um, John, remind me, Cassandra Wynn was the one who dug up the bones, right? Yes, Cassandra okay. was the archaeology student. Yeah. Nope. Would you like to push the roll or what's pushing the roll again? Pushing the roll. Let me pull up the rules. So I don't. I get it that's right. a lot of luck. I think that would be like all of my luck. Actually, I have thirty nine. Yeah, it's all of it. Yeah, I, I'm bad at math, and that's bad. Yeah. Don't. I don't remember what pushing the roll is. 
All right. Uh, just need enough for that or both of us? Uh, yeah, both of you. Both of you can do it. Uh, so pushing a roll. Uh, basically, you... Pushing a roll is doing something above and beyond uh, the, the, the initial skill check to try to figure out what it is. Now, you have to figure out what that is. So, like, uh, for example, if you're trying to spot something rele you know, relevant about boats, you know, you could go, like, uh, while, you're walking down the, while you're walking down the docks, you're know, just sort of casually looking. Uh, but if you, if you fail and you want to push that roll, you can go, okay, no, I actually go down the docks and get closer to the boats and sort of mm -hmm. inspect more thoroughly inspect. Um, okay. So, uh, uh, success. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, yes, I'm just going to make sure I'm getting all the bits of information about this real quick. Just cause I don't, I want, I want to give you full and complete information. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, and so you you can push the roll by basically doing that means you can roll it again. Mm -hmm. uh, however, if you fail the pushed roll, something bad might happen. Like yep. basically, it's on me to say, well, now you've 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 taken this to a step beyond, and now yep. failure can potentially have a much more drastic effect than it would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you have I'm to. I'm not gonna do that because Amelia got the roll. <laughs> yeah. So you have to justify the thing, mm -hmm. and then you can just sort of roll it again. Cool. Uh, okay. okay. But you can only ever push once, and basically it's a it's a chance to. You failed that. Okay. Well, let's mm -hmm. let's push harder. Yep. Amelia. So, well, both of you can see it's a wide variety of boats. Like some of these are much older than others. None of them are real. None of them really look new. But like these boats have been around since the city's been around. Basically, is what you're getting the idea of. Um, and yes, there are indeed some of them that are flat bottom. Some of them that are that have metal attached to them for various interpretations of reasons. Um, most of them have uh, places for fishing rods, and as people are getting on, you can sort of see now uh, people setting up fishing rods, setting up, you know, they're tr setting up nets, uh, preparing lines. Some of them are going out with nothing, and you sort of ask, you sort of assume those are sort of trap hauling uh, boats that are going to go out and actually pull up traps that were laid previously and sort of see what they caught. Um, this is a this is a uh, these people spend a lot of time on the water, so you're seeing a lot of preparation going. There are certainly several boats that look like they could have been the 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 boat or the kind of boat that you saw saw, saw the tracks of previously, Amelia. Um, yeah, there are several that would leave that indentation that you're seeing. None of them stand out particularly. You mean there isn't a person with a whole bunch of candles? Wearing cult attire here on one of the boats with clearly no fishing equipment. Yeah, no. Weirdly, uh, weirdly, none of the there are no dinosaur bones or candle, you know, candle lit, uh, 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 uh cult activity going on right now. No, that's fair. Just checking because that would be probably weird. Yeah, and as you know, and Nina, your attention has been has been caught by the fact that, uh. As you're walking around the corner, a bucket of chum just sort of hits the ground and covers your shoes. Gosh. Damn it. And it's, just, and it's just fish guts and blood, and it's... Oh, that smell's never going to come out. Nope. It's in your socks. <sighs> okay. Someone, nice someone off the sides apologizing and picking it back up and trying to shovel what's left of it back into the bucket. Sort of that wave of I am also apologizing, yeah. but not a ton because we didn't bump into you. Um, but it's totally fine. I think perk of my line of work is you have to very quickly get different smells on and off of you. <laughs> so with an inherently chum-like smell emanating from your from your shoes, uh, Nina, the two of mm -hmm. you continue on down the docks eventually spotting uh what is very clearly the the drunken irishman it's a it's a larger building than the rest of them most of the things on the most things that are actually on the 
on the docks are warehouses or boat houses or or, or regular houses. Um, this is very clearly an establishment that they 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 took all the choices piece choicest pieces of boats and stapled them together to form this place. Uh, in addition to there being a sign sort of hanging down from the front that reads "Drunken Irish," uh, the 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 uh, drunken Irishman, Pick, pickled Irishman, or the pickled pickled Irishman. Sorry, the pickled Irishman, and it's just it's just a redheaded, pale skinned guy sitting in a pickle barrel. Eat it with a pickle in one hand and a mug in the other of foaming drink. Mm -hmm. uh, and the doors are not really doors. They're saloon doors, so they don't really close all the way. And you can hear a bit of activity inside. You know, people talking. You can hear the people that are coming in to grab a couple drinks and maybe something to munch on as they're heading out. Um, yeah. This seems like it this sort of seems like the sort of establishment that has a breakfast shift and then closes and then reopens when the boats come back in. Yep. So you're sort of hitting the well, end of the Given that ship. they're probably further along the breakfast ship now, because it's presumably dawn by this point. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, you're, you're, you're definitely imagining that the breakfast shift is tailoring out towards the end. Yeah. Head on in. Yep. <laughs> There's that moment of that old Western moment where the, the saloon doors open and everyone turns and looks. And Except for it's two and... old ladies. Yep. <laughs> you know. And they, they they go back to their business fairly quickly. Uh somebody who is somebody over on the uh over on the table uh looks kinda like the guy on the sign. Bright red hair, pale skin, freckles all over, green eyes, very clearly the Irishman of the pickled Irishman. Uh mm -hmm. comes over. Oh well, hello there, ladies. How can I help you? Hello. Oh, we're we're actually just looking into some missing people. Oh, missing people, certainly. I am always glad to help a a figure of authority, as it were. The name is Flynn. Holds out a hand. Uh, shakes it. Thank you, Flynn. I will shake his hand. Uh, Bubba says hello. Oh, hey, hey. All right. So Bubba pointed your way down here. Ah, he's one of our better customers. So, would you like a drink or something to snack on before you get started? I'm good, thank you. And he sort of very subtly slides them in you. You're not certain where he pulled it from, but he definitely has a lot of them behind the bar. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I will order something before I leave because I do understand the way of these things. But, like... To the extent that this can be communicated, there's sort of the, you'll get my business if you're answering my questions. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty easy, easily communicated across. That's my, my job is to do this communication for the forensic scientists, probably. Um, you know a Robin, vague description, comes here, here some night. It's one of the university folk. All oh, right. Well, we have a few university kids that come out here to party when they're, you know, dealing off the stress of having to attend such a highfalutin Ivy League school. But certainly, uh, uh, little Faulkner does come around quite a bit. You remember when you last saw him? Uh, last time I saw the Faulkner. Uh, had a bit of a scrap with one of our regulars. It was a few weeks ago, I believe. Uh, sort of gives you a general idea of the last time that that uh, Robin's roommate said that they, so the date yeah. that Robin's roommate said that they had been there. And does had a, this sound had a like? Out. This doesn't sound like the day Robin went missing. No. It was the... This this sort of lines up with the 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 time frame the roommate gave you. Which yeah, was the... a month and a half ago, there was a fisherman. It was kind of creepy. Yeah, there was a creepy fisherman and Robin's like sort of bucked out. Robin usually the type to cause trouble? Eh, only as much trouble as any sort of young person who's uh, stressed, drunk, and horny can cause. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Alright, that clarifies what we needed to know. Now for other questions. Um, did um 
I'm trying to, the last time his roommate had seen him, he was in that morning and then he left or I'm trying to remember. Uh, they were, yeah, they had gone to, they, they, yeah. they had gone, they had gone to class and hadn't been seen since. Okay. And it wasn't unusual for Z to spend a night out. Right. Yeah. Though would usually pick someone up at this bar or another bar. Yeah. Um, yeah, they were doing decent stuff. And then... I realize that I also use the made pronouns, but sometimes conjugating them is so hard. Yeah. <laughs> I, went for a, I went for some of the easier ones, too, when I was assigning yeah. pronouns. I was yeah. like, Z is pretty easy. <laughs> but it's still, it's like, blah. Well, it's for me, it's say the sentence, wait a second, did I put the right version of it in? <laughs> Anyways. Okay. The fact that I am bad at grammar to start with aside. Um, yeah, uh, that's the last time that I just said that. Um, Anyone who wants to make an idea roll? Yes. Bang. Sure. I'm really just running through episodes of Hawaii Five-0 in my brain right now. <laughs> Beautiful. Nah. I was thinking about asking if hard success. So if you, if you had something you were thinking about asking, you can absolutely still ask it. Yeah. If you weren't thinking about it yet, asking about potentially details of the night of the incident with Robin might give you mm -hmm. some more clues as to what happened. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Mara, was there something you wanted to... No, that was pretty much it. I was okay. asking more about, about that night, who this other person was, that type of thing. Any chance you know what the scrap was about? Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, well, I do tend to keep a running tab of any miscreants causing trouble in my bar. Uh, we were clo we were getting closer to closing time, about 2, 3 in the morning. Uh, folks were getting ready to head out and do their thing, you know, as it were. Uh, this right ugly bastard had come into the bar, uh, you know, warts and all over the face. Not really one that I'd familiar with myself, not one of my regulars, really. Uh, well... Dressed like a regular, but definitely not a regular, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, just started, started sort of jabbering in some sort of foreign tongue uh, at the at the at the person and uh, at at Zer and uh, freaked Zer out. Had a couple of boys separate the two of them, and they wandered back off uh, into the night. Uh, Warty face didn't stay much longer after, but didn't follow them. Seem like Z knew the language? Uh, hard to tell. I didn't know it. So hard to, you know, hard to look at someone and see if they recognize a thing you don't recognize yourself. Didn't say anything back. Fair enough. No. I, I said plenty back, but it was in English. Mostly, you know, get the fuck off me. Who the fuck are you? Creepy fucker. That kind of thing. Fair enough. And you hadn't seen this other guy, other other individual... Before, that's like I said. They, they they were certainly dressed like a regular, you know, had fishing slops on and all the and all the lot, but uh, uh, not one that I recognized the face of. And I recognize the face of most of my regulars, unless of course I'm too slosh when I meet them to remember. But you know, fair. They Can come I do by a cycle on this? Sure. Have they come by since? Not that I know of. Uh. None of my other bartenders have uh, mentioned it. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, Amelia, yeah, he's telling the truth. Uh, he's very good. He's also, you can tell, very good at talking. So you imagine yeah. if he wasn't if he wasn't telling the truth, it'd be pretty hard for you to tell. But at the moment, as far as you can tell, telling the truth. Yeah. And this pretty much exactly collaborates the act other yeah. testimony we have and right? that's and that's pretty much the the way you're you're confirming that he's telling the truth is that it lines up pretty well with people who you have a much easier time reading 
He seemed particularly interested in Zer or just someone who's a bit of it out of the ordinary for a regular easy to pick. Quite frankly, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I only noticed I only noticed the altercation once it had started. Uh, Fair enough. I you know, a <laughs> few dozen folks in here drinking and taking drinking and making merry. I can only pay attention to so many of them at a time. Yeah, we're busy. Um, said face warts. Yeah, ugly, ugly bastard. Looked like somebody hit him with. Looked like somebody went a few rounds with the ugly stick on him. Right. Hmm. I I will try and get like a general sort of height and weight, it's some additional sort of like. Yeah, and he'll he'll give you. Uh, yeah. Basically, what you get is around six three fisherman's build, which is you know, big, broad, little overweight, um, yeah. well muscled, big scraggly, big scraggly beard. Uh, heavy set eyebrows, long scraggly hair. Um, looked like yeah. he'd been beat around the face a few times with the ugly stick. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah. If if he gives me more details, that's all I want. Enough yep. that the description could be passed on to someone else. Yeah. Not enough. It's not enough to ID somebody from a photo alone. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it is certainly enough to that other people would be able to recognize that yeah. site. Mm -hmm. Um. Sorry, Mara, I feel like I keep interrupting. No, it's okay. You're doing the talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, any chance any of the winds are regulars? Uh, ben and, uh, well, uh, ben and Stacy uh, come around a few times. Uh, their, girls had, their girl hasn't been around since she, you know, in, uh, went to college. Uh, which we're right proud of her for doing. Uh, you know, not many of us get out. Not many of us get out of here to get a higher education. So, one that can stick to it long enough to get a scholarship and get up into the and get up into the Ivy League. Well, that's uh, that's one girl we're very proud of around here. <laughs> heard about her dig? I uh, heard heard that they were doing a dig up the river. Uh, one of those test digs. Hadn't heard anything special about it though. Why? Uh, oh, local news is reporting on some bone. And she found or something. Ah, well, we don't have the news channel in here all that often. He says, pointing over to the TV on the wall that is very clearly, like, broken. Oh, right, there are TVs. I was just <laughs> going with TVs, not a thing yet, because no, no. Aaron's bad at history. There are TVs. They're not good TVs, but there are TVs. And it's sort of broken. Yeah. And it's very clearly, like, they have electricity and, and various means here, but it's not, like... This is something. Yeah. This is something they fished out of somewhere and haven't really fixed yeah. it yet. Yeah, uh -huh. no, they dug something big out of the out of the riverbank. Strange bones. Oh, hey, what kind of strange bones? <sighs> Apparently, they couldn't tell you for all their learning. Well, must not be a regular fish bone then. No, apparently there's. Bigger fish in this river, though. Oh, hey, there's lots of big fish in this river. You know, you have all manner of sorts. You've got, and he starts listing off fish, <laughs> none of which are anything close to this. No, but well, you know, we're we're in a bit of a unique situation because we're connected to the ocean. We get, you know, we get fresh water. We get freshwater fish out west and saltwater fish out east. So. You know, it's we true. get a wide variety of catch that we can get here, which is part of the reason why there's so many of us out on the river. It's a good spot to fish. Boy. Ever seen anything this big? And I will slide across the drawing of the um of the fish I made the night before. It looks like it. Both of you give me a psychology roll. Okay. <laughs> He just sort of looks down at it. Oh, shit. No, I uh, can't rightly tell you that this is uh, something I'm familiar with. No. Uh, Nina. No. Nah. Truth. Uh, Amelia seems to be telling the truth. Okay. But again, you do already know because of your hard success previously that if he's lying, it's hard to it's tell. It's gonna be hard to tell. Yeah. Um. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, 
the university thinks both Uthkas and Robin aren't around anymore and they're not sure why. So if you happen to see either of them, let them know people are worried. He'd... Certainly, certainly. Uh, he sort of uh, thinks for a second. Before you go, officers. Amy, uh, Amy uh, reaches down on the, reaches down underneath the bar, pours something. Yeah. Puts two glasses on the table. On the house, feel free, and feel free to come back later in the evening. You get a little bit of a sense of a little bit, you know, the nightlife around here. And sort of smiles, and smiles and winks, and yeah. sure. moves down the road. Um, I will pay for the drinks anyway because on the house for the officers. Yeah, yeah. Look, I could get in trouble for that, even if Nina probably won't. Um, but yeah, unless I saw him put something into it, I'll drink it. Uh, so you don't see anything that you put underneath it. You do see something underneath it, though. Sort yeah. of a folded, a folded piece of paper with writing on it. Hmm. That you sort of, that sort of sticks to the glass as you pick it up, and you sort of see it hit the hit the counter. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna sort of. I feel like there's something in here that is technically that that I took, but I will just sort of slide that into my uh, extensive sleeves. Yeah, it'd be uh, it'd be sleight of hand if it wasn't such an easy roll, but it's you don't have to worry about it. You just, just get it right in there. Yeah, he made it easy for us, yeah. which I appreciate. Yeah, I'll drink that weird stuff, whatever it is. It's fairly polite. it's fairly sweet. Um, this it. It has a, it's sort of a warm honey taste um, mm. with a, there's obviously the sort of that spike of alcohol at the end of it, but it's the kind of drink that after a few of these, you wouldn't notice the alcohol anymore and you would just taste the honey. I feel Good. like there's a Skyrim joke to be made here. I have no idea. Mead is good. Yeah, it is. It's good. Thank you. Don't worry. How specialty? He seems to be he seems to be cleaning up the bar now and getting ready to close up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Pay for the drinks. Head on out. Okay. Yep. Doors <laughs> behind you. There's a a crowd of people heading out at the same time. Mm-hmm. Head back to the bar unless there's anything else we wanted to check out down here. Yeah, I can't think of what else to do. Only the thing I'd be trying to, and I'll say this somewhat quietly, only the other thing I'd see is if, if whoever manages the building the winds live in and has noticed there's no one in there right now. That's true. I was also wondering about whoever made that little visit to the site last night. There are a few boats that it could be, but I don't think there's going to be anything we can do to figure out who was out last night. Eight, eight after hour, or No. But because I did before, I'll sort of gesture to a few of the boats that I was like, these are the kinds that could have made this track when we were... Mm. Ah, yes, yes. I see what you mean. Yeah. There's a few of them. Yeah. Make our way back to our car. Mm -hmm. You make your way back unaccosted. It seems that at, like as you're walking, you see a bunch of you see the boats beginning to head out. And after by the time you get to your car, it's basically just the people that maintain the security yeah. of Fishtown that are left behind. Mm-hmm. I mean, so here's the thing. It's head out time. This is the wrong time to get mugging people because everyone's busy. Yeah. So as we sit and as we climb it back into the car, I debate taking my shoes off, decide that it's going to smell everything up anyway. And so leave them on. I'm slightly sad about this. You uh, wiggle your toes a bit and it squishes. Mm, yep. Uh, You've worked with preserved dead things. 
Yes. Yes. This is Which intentionally this, corpse smell. This is intentionally not preserved dead things, though. <laughs> Fish. The 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 smell of a corpse is is quite actually different. It is, uh, and I will go into the <laughs> slight <laughs> chemistry of corpse smell, which is very distinct. Um. Anyway. Uh. Also, I try not to get it on me. I'm usually wearing a coat or an apron. Uh, when I do a dissection. Uh, but where are we going to next? Um, We're waiting to hear back from the the uh, is it the butler? from the mansion about a time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We um, need to go further out of town to speak to Robin's family. Was. John is making gestures that I don't know what they mean. I'm indicating your sleeve. Yeah, you got something. Yes, on your I. I mean, I assume that like we are driving out. I want to be out of this okay. part of town cool, cool, before cool. I check that. Cool, cool, cool. Fair, fair. Um, could try and look at the dig site in the lay of day, but I don't think there's going to. We. Um, I'm not sure if that will reveal anything further. Um, we could ask the sheriff about the description of the guy. We yes. could go poking around local religious records for candle cults of ancient monsters. We need to speak to that translator. We need to get that. That's right. At, um, and a, I assume at this point we're out of that oh, part. Yeah. No, it's, it's thing out of my sleeve. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get out. So <laughs> pull it out. Would I have noticed that? Pulling the thing out. Yeah. The, well, the like the yeah the whole. Not putting, not, not not having seen it under the glass because it was very specifically under Amelia's glass. Okay, it's very okay. Yeah, cool. But you would notice that when Amelia pulls it out. And yeah, you guys are on the road uh, outside. Of, the fish smell has receded, except for the smell of chum in the car. So Amelia, you pull out the piece of paper, mm-hmm. unfold it. It's an address in Fishtown. Yeah. Uh, it's an address in Fishtown, and it says, uh, best time is noon. Uh, and and it says, to... best time is noon, and be armed. Yeah. Ooh. And we have somewhere to go armed around noon. I assume you have a firearm. What? <laughs> Call it an anonymous tip. One of our, our friends. And this wants to say more than they could and told us where to head and for information. Right then. The address is a boat warehouse in Fishtown. All right. Well, right now it's probably still early morning. It's yeah, um, it's it's past dawn now, so it's you know around 8 a.m. at the moment. Right. Well, I very much want to change my shoes. Okay. However, um, could still get some other stuff done. I'd like to go back to the hotel and um, change my shoes, make that call to DC. Probably take a shower. The translator. Yeah. Did, do you want to the call won't take both of us did you want to divide our forces get more ground covered where do you need me to go um um there was the religious angle uh or what was the other one um robin's robin would be way out of town that's probably too far um uh robin's family um and you'd probably need to be there for that just in case because technically that's an official interview with the family of a victim um what was the other one i'm i feel like i'm blanking on something there was another uh um, possible angle well we need to get the translator we need to get the but both of those are probably the same call to home office yes yeah Mm -hmm. um 
Uh, the other thing I suggested was we could pass along the description of the guy who argued with Robin to the locals, see if yeah. they've had any run-ins with the same person. He sounds quite distinctive. Yes. Or the local cops. That's true. Would you mind going down to the station while I get changed? Seems reasonable to me. Just occurs to me he, that Bubba must have... He actually introduced himself as that, right, John? Yep, Bubba, yep. Bubba Ray. Bubba must have of the most convenient job in the world, given that the entire police department look exactly the same. In varying sizes. Oh, that's the sheriff's department, not the the police department is more varied. Ah, okay. We've got several levels of jurisdiction here. Should we also inform the sheriff's department? I was thinking about going to the sheriff's department because they're who we're technically liaising with. Yes. And they can decide. They can always option the police records. You guys are federal, the sheriff is state, and the police are local. Okay, cool. Those are the three jurisdictions at play at the moment. Thank you for explaining. <laughs> yep. Um, the sheriff is state, and also the ones that end up in malls. Yeah, we should pro definitely push that then, ask that they send that to the police department in case this guy has any prior records. Yep. <laughs> A name or anything would be definitely nice. That would be helpful. Yeah. All right. Question is whether this person's actually a fisherman or just someone who knows well enough of to look the part. It's true. <sighs> yeah. Well. Anyways. Great. So you head back to the hotel. Yep. Nina changes clothes, showers probably, gets on the phone. Yep. Uh-huh. Amelia, you head to... Before I do that, I am going to check with reception. We haven't gotten any of those messages yet. No messages yet, no. Cool. Uh, so are you heading to the statue where your liaison was indicating that they would be during the search, or are you heading to the actual police department? Uh, do I think they're still doing the search and going to have someone there? Yeah, the, the search seemed to be an ongoing effect of like, uh, you know, while you guys are doing investigations that would hopefully narrow their search window, there's still a manhunt for yeah. the missing people. I'll, I'll go to the person who's sort of assigned to me, my runner or whatever. Yeah. So you head uh, uh, to the statue uh, in, in the, the statue courtyard. And yes, there is still a, a member of the sheriff's department there. Uh, uh, I ver again, Large, well-muscled woman who looks like she punches bulls for, you know, for fun. Uh, standing with what looks like a comically undersized umbrella, even though it is a normal-sized umbrella. It just looks comically undersized because she's holding it. Just sort of above, because it is raining at the moment, and sort of yeah. above her, you know. And, and it keeps this perfect cylinder around her of, of, of dryness. Wave, introduce myself if this isn't one of the ones we've met before. Out of there, y'all, y'all one of the y'all, blah 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 blah. You're part of the investigation team, am I correct? Indeed, Amelia, I, with the FBI. Yeah, uh, shoot. Um, we had a description of a potential suspect, or at least someone who had had negative run-ins with one of our are missing individuals, and we were hoping to cross-check that, that description with your records and maybe also the police's. Do, do, do. Sorry, I'm looking at names real quick. I'm trying to remember the name of the sheriff. There it is. Uh, well, certainly we can pass this along to Sheriff Cartwright as well as connect it with our, with our liaison in the local police department. you have a copy of this, or would you like us to make a copy uh, first? Um... Here's your copy, and Amelia will hand over what may be a fairly competent sketch, but probably also all of the, the specific speakers. statements made about this person, their height, their weight, their build, clothes they were wearing, facial features, and notable other things. 
the uh the 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 sheriff's deputy looks looks at it sort of you see the eyes even though they're covered by aviator glasses sort of scanning all right we'll get a copy of this down to the local police department is there anything else that you need from from us today at the moment no just please let us know if you have any matches on that even partial matches that are compelling thing in a and y'all are staying at the hotel at the hotel miss katonic am i correct indeed all right uh she reaches into her shirt reaches down into the cleavage pulls out a large whistle uh puts it to her lips turns and blows there's this loud shrill whistle and you see jogging across the uh, jogging down the street in the rain same outfit but slightly smaller uh another sheriff's deputy come running up just at full breakneck pace stops uh she turns leans over so that the umbrella covers partially both of them now uh hands the paper over you need to get a copy of this to the sheriff cartwright as well as a copy down to the police department it is a potential suspect in our missing persons case La uh the relevant details are on the paper the, the Jap other deputy goes yes ma'am uh turns tuck uh uh pulls her shirt open, tucks it in so that the papers are nice and safe, and then turns and jogs off. Any other updates for us that you're aware of? Not at the moment. We have expanded our search to include the dig sites of the archaeology students as per your request. We have a team that went out to the dig site number 13 this morning to investigate as well. Found a scalloped bit of area that looks like it may have been where the initial uh, bones were dug up by the students and are investigating further there. Thank you. Um, yeah, unless she has anything else she needs to mention to me. Nope. That's me doing my job. All right. So, Nina, freshly cleaned with the, with the faint smell of chum still in your nose, you go to the phone. Yeah. Use... If you use, uh, fun fact, if you use lemon or orange, it works really well on fish smells. Anyway, yep, pick up the phone, dial. Oh. Takes forever to dial a rotary phone. You should ask the operator connecting. Yeah, but this is a direct line, so you have to dial it. Ring. Ring. Agent Thomas, you are connected to the Bureau. How might we help you? This is the voice of the operator at the Bureau. Yep. Yes, I need a translation. Uh, I will fax the pages over to you. Um, translation from Spanish uh, for... If I know the name of the person who does the translations for the agency. Yeah, you'll you'll you can write off the name of the translator. Yep. There's a pause. Um, anything else? I don't think there was was there anything else? I think it was just that. Right? Is I am very bad at keeping track of all the things. Okay. As far as I'm aware. Nope, that'll do it. You hear in the distance. The quick sound of two gu of two shots firing. <laughs> There's a pause. Very well. Look for return fax. At twelve hundred. Uh, 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 look look for return fax at uh, sixteen hundred hours. All right. Thank you. I hang up. Quick. Occasionally, you hear gunfire on the phone, and when you're in the FBI, it's yeah. You know, this it's... seems normal. This is and I will. This is this is back when they had lots of people that were multitasking in the bureau. You know, they had to. And I will send random people. Well, yeah. while they're on the phone. Sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> or or be near people who are shooting. You know, you never know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will fax that information over. Yep. You send a fax off. And you know to expect a reply uh, by sixteen hundred hours, which is four, four in the evening, four in the afternoon. Yep. All and right. Eventually, Amelia returns to the hotel. All right. 
there I've got folks working on it. Uh, sheriff's sheriff's uh, deputies got that information. Perfect. Yeah. Sent along. Um, and they now, will be probably. forwarding it to their own offices and the police department and letting us know. They've also expanded their search to the dig sites as of this morning. Dang, and seems like all they've found so far is where the bones came from. Right. They hadn't noticed any of the unusual activity that we did. No, I'm sorry. Mm. I, but it is basically eight in the morning. They may not have been there for very long yet. And you both know from from previous experience that the the state and local authorities move at a much slower pace than you guys do. Yep. Because they have to coordinate with a lot of people and they have a lot of jurisdictional lines they have to cross and eyes they have to dot. Where you guys are pretty much freelance as far as jurisdiction mm -hmm. goes. Yep. So long as you don't break any laws that can't be covered underneath a warrant. <laughs> Fair. Oh, I think I had remember. Did we ask? We were going to. That's what I forgot. Um, uh, something about getting a warrant for. There was some place where they wouldn't let us in without a warrant. Um. Oh, the uh, the um, in the frat house. Yes. I don't. The Amelia may president. not have passed that on to me though. The vice president of the frat house did say that you needed a warrant to search the premises. Yeah, I, I definitely passed that on. Okay. I thought that was one of the reasons we were calling. Sorry, I forgot that bit. It with a page saying, translate plus. Yes. Can I make the case that I would have remembered that? And you, could put always, that in you could always call them back. <laughs> I'll call them back, damn it. <laughs> I just like to think that there's a thing about was there a warrant issue? And Amelia's like, yes. And he was like, pick up, <laughs> dial, 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 Shit. dial. Yeah, dial. yeah. Go through the whole thing. It's, it's the same exact shot as the other one. <laughs> Just now with Amelia in the background. <laughs> um, You pick it up. There's a moment's pause. You hear what sounds like somebody being strangled on the other end. Mm. Hello. Detective, uh, I'm sorry, hello, Agent Thomas. Yes. I also need a warrant issued for, uh, what was the, what was the, the sorry. Uh, the what room of name? one of the people who is uh, living at this address, which is a frat house. Yes. He is missing. We know he's missing because he's been reported missing. Yep. Do you need a warrant for one room specifically, or would you like one for the building as a whole? Building as a whole, we can. Building as a whole would be perfect. Look for the warrant in the 1600 facts. Thank you. That will be all. <laughs> Hang up. <laughs> Stare at the phone for a sec. <laughs> right. Never know what they're doing over there. The same thing they're always doing. Work. <laughs> like we are. Okay. Uh, it's about <laughs> noon? Yeah, it's, it's, it's about, we'll say it's about yes. 11 o'clock now, yeah. I should mention that I'm not allowed to carry on a weapon given um, my- No, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just how quickly that was was just great. <laughs> Let's go. Yep. <laughs> Head out. I've got my firearm. All right. One of you has a firearm. Yep. The other of you, the other of you is old and slow and will be the first to be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I still have my ultimate Call of Cthulhu trick. I try and seduce it. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Yep. I've seen enough hentai. Anyways. Oh. <laughs> 
So you head back to Fishtown. It takes about 30 minutes. You get there around 1130-ish. Yep. Um, which is pretty- I will encourage just to sort of park somewhere that I think less people are going to see. I know that at the people who watch the town are probably still going to see us just because they see mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. But you can be more or less seen by the average person who's yeah. busy with other stuff. And you can give me, you guys, if you would like, can give me stealth checks. Sure. Yeah. As you re-enter Fishtown, either on foot or in car or some combination thereof. Combination. I mean, that's not terribly surprising. Would you like to push the roll? I am really old. Oh. Would I oh, like to push the roll? And you are slightly luck? less old, but still quite old. Or I could spend luck on that. That's not too many. Yeah, go for it. Mm, 14. 15. 14 luck. I don't have that many. Um, no, I'll leave it for now. All right. This is, and I'm not pushing this one. So, car backfiring occasionally as you pull it in, uh, announces your presence as you as you drive down to Fishtown. It's a good idea to park somewhere where people can't see. The problem is that people can hear places they can't see too. Yeah. As it's loud as the car shuts off. Oh, I should probably tune it up. Uh, probably get the agency to fix it. Yeah, it's a lot of paperwork for it. You, you'd think it's you, the other stuff is fine, but paperwork for getting your car repaired is shit. Sure. Let's go. And you get out of the car where it's parked away from prying eyes mm-hmm. and on the docks where you can walk down to where the, uh, to where the warehouse that was indicated is. Uh, the docks are pretty much empty. All the boats, like all but like one or two of the boats are out uh, mm-hmm. on the river. Uh, you can see several of them from where you're at. Not all of them because some went, you know, some went up river, some went down river, but uh, there are definitely people you can see pulling, you know, pulling various traps and nets out of the water and throwing things back in and moving along the river as they do so. Uh, occasionally making way for uh, cargo vessels that are coming up, that are coming up the river. From the ocean. Mm-hmm. Trying to be way. aware as we go in of kind of the land of the building, any exit points, um, that kind of thing. So you reach the warehouse. Uh it's it's a it's a boat warehouse, which means that it has this uh it has this large closed like barn door system and a ramp that goes down into the water. So if you dump if you jump into the water, you can get in pretty easily. Outside of that uh, there is a single door on the on the dock, so, sort of on the side of the warehouse, and a cup and like a cargo door on the back side. All of them are closed. There are also a couple of access points on the you know, sort of like in the in the roof area where because the roof is open to the air. Like there's okay. a there's a there's like a a cargo wrench uh, on top of the 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 doors that open it out, and that opens through into the into the. Uh, I can't think of the the name of it, but the the rafters of the of the the thing. It's a fairly large warehouse. It looks like it could probably store uh, a pretty sizable boat as well as a bunch of cargo. Um, I'm and... gonna go and try the person door. Okay, uh, you walk up to the you walk up to the person door. You're just gonna try to open it up, or you're gonna listen at it, look at it, anything like that. I'll listen first, but I'm probably just gonna try and see if it's locked. Sure. Um, but go ahead and give me a listen check. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm I'm assuming you will want the person with the gun up there in case, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, usually when your contact says come armed, that means something. Yep. So you listen in, and it doesn't sound like there's anything going on immediately. Like it doesn't, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like there's anybody in there or anything moving around. It sounds fairly empty. Mm-hmm. And, and you can also hear the water, sort of the, the, the sloshing of water sort of echoing up through it. So there, there might be, if there's, something go, if there's something moving around in there, it's covered by the sound of the water, but that'd have to be something pretty small. Mm-hmm. 
and just general like activity level on the street outside this area is fairly like fairly empty. everyone's out on their boats yeah fairly empty the people that are watching are the people that are watching the the neighborhood are watching like the residential area um cool. more than the do boat docks and this area seems particularly cleared out at the moment trying the knob uh you try it it's locked uh, it sounds like it, it's like the, the knob doesn't lock because this, is this isn't the kind of thing where the knob locks, but you pull on it and there's definitely a bar and chain on the other side that's keeping it closed. In which case, I cannot locksmith this. Uh, what would you like to do? You're the federal officer. So sort of look it's around. Locked. You could probably climb. One of you could probably climb up to a up to the rafters and get in. There's enough stuff on the barn to make that climb possible. Mm. How good you're at it, I don't know, but it's possible. What <laughs> role is climbing? Climb. Climb. We used huh. to get up the stairs in the last one. It's a disastrous effect. I mean, I can try and climb. You want to try and climb? Should we climb or should we knock on the door? Your call. Did the note indicate that we were going to be expected? I hand you the note, which says basically nothing. Yeah, it well, says that... it's a it's a it's a location, a time, and the words "come armed." Come armed. Okay. Mm, I don't know if I want to announce our presence. There's not another door. There are, there is the, there's the there barn doors. There are barn doors, which will definitely announce That's, our presence. Yeah. There's also a cargo bag, which similarly. Yeah. Yes, okay. You could, mm. you could, you could swim in if you want. It is open to the water. <sighs> I'm pretty sure I'm even worse at swimming than I am at climbing. I just dried off. <laughs> I mean. Would you like me to swim in? Would you like me to climb in? Oh, I'm I'm equally bad at both of those. <laughs> what would you think is best? You'd also try to brute force the door if you really wanted. Yeah, I could just shoot the lock. That would also announce our presence. You can't shoot it. It's a bolt on the far side. All right. Thank you for explaining that. Uh... <sighs> Never mind. I'm just going to try and swim in. Right. Make a swimming roll. All right. And I stand there, I ears peeled for the gunshot. Sure it's happening. And I don't have that much luck, I don't think. Actually, oh. let me check. 27. Yeah, that's 27. Uh, that's more than half my luck. What's the worst that could happen failing a swimming roll in a Call of Cthulhu game? Yeah, no, I definitely will be drowning and being eaten by the monster. Fine. Um, I'll spend 27 luck. Give me a second to figure out how much that is. It's 27. You know what I mean. I know, I know, I know. I know. I'm using... Ooh, goodness. That's... Most of my luck, I know. Yeah, okay. You could, you could try to push the roll instead of spending it if you want. No. <laughs> because if I push and fail... Which I will remind you of a twenty percent chance of succeeding. Yeah, something bad will definitely happen. True. As opposed to, it's likely that something. So, bad will. you get down into the water. It's fucking cold, really mm -hmm. fucking cold. Uh, takes your breath for a minute, and you're like sort of ah 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 whoo ah. Associate yourself with the water. Get calm. Get get ready. And you sort of dive underneath the docks, and you, you, it's pretty easy to swim here. Um, uh, the the because you have the dock pillars that you can sort of grab on. Mostly, what you're doing is keeping yourself afloat, so that you can pull yourself along. Uh, pretty strenuous. You haven't done anything like this in a long time, and you're not exactly the strongest person in the world. But you manage to pull yourself up underneath the barn doors and into the warehouse, where you can now see that it is full of cargo and a boat. A flat bottom metal boat that is currently unmanned, but sitting in the water, bobbing up and down. Um, <clears throat> you pull yourself up onto the side of the cargo inside, the water sort of pouring off of and out of your dress. 
Uh, the most of the cargo here is wrapped up in paper and wooden crates, uh, tied together, sealed, pretty pretty well, uh, pretty well efficiently sealed up. Uh, as you pull yourself into the cargo, into the into the the cargo uh, warehouse, it's fairly large. The boat takes up about the boat dock takes up about half of it, and the other half is full of boxes. Uh, I assume you go over to the door to let Nina in. Yeah. Right. Yep. Let Nina in. So very quietly, keep you know making sure not to disturb any of the crates or anything. You head over towards the door. There doesn't seem to be anybody inside. Uh, you notice uh, piles of hay in one corner, more mm. boxes in another corner, uh, a desk that has some paperwork on it, and a lamp and a lamp that's currently unlit. The cargo bay doors are also closed and latched. Um, you get over to the side, you get over to the personal entrance, fiddle with the lock, open the latch, open the door. Nina, you now have access to the inside of the, of the warehouse and a wet Amelia. Right. Glad to see you're still alive. I make sure my gun is unclipped in case I need to draw it rapidly. I'm going to check what's in the boat. Right. I'm going to check the desk. All right. It occurs to me we probably should have given and then the last known location before we came. Shit. I could call That's back. <laughs> yeah, check the boat. Get out. Close the door. Drive back to the hotel. Call again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, Amelia, you head over to the boat. You find... Um, uh, there is definitely the remains of some burnt out candle wax here, um, in the boat. Like somebody, like somebody grabbed some candles that were still burning and then snuffed them and put them here and they hadn't fully congealed before they were put on the boat. Uh, the candles are no longer there, but bits of wax are still sort of around the sides and edges of the boat. Um, mm. other than that, it's pretty clean. Looks like it's been scrubbed down. It's just wax is really hard to get off, particularly this kind of wax. Uh, Mina, what are you looking at? I'm looking at the desk. There's uh, paperwork on there? Yeah, there's paperwork over there. You go over the desk. Um, this seems to be some sort of shipping manu- uh, shipping register um, indicating uh, parcels in, parcels out. There's no clear indication as to what's in the parcels, just that uh, sort of a volume and a measurement of weight. Um, seems like this, this warehouse handles... Uh, uh, fairly hefty packages. Most everything here is weighed uh, very highly, so it's not just fish or anything. It's actual products that are in these crates. Mm-hmm. And I remember we had been one of the the other theories besides the cult activity, which definitely feels relevant, but um, was smuggling. There's no indications of that. Everything seems fairly like official on board. Make, a, make an appraisal check. Okay. Um, does this seem like the same kind of candle wax that was could yes it seems like the very it seems like very much the same kind of candle wax that you found and took a sample of previously you I'd found like a to... boat. okay I'd like to make a case for law for that yeah, you can make a law roll okay so I desperately try and do the skills that I'm slightly better at okay. I have some appraise which you'd okay. know if you need okay it. yeah uh yeah, so I I can't figure it out, but yep. Uh, so you're looking at it. I mean, you're not you're not a customs officer. No, you've never really worked in customs before. Mm-hmm. So you really don't know what to look for to indicate if this is a smuggling operation or not. Um, and the information is just too vague. Like nothing, nothing here says here's our but here's where we store our box of illegal goods. You know, aha. <laughs> There's nothing like that on these paper in this paperwork. Okay, fair. There's no folder marked totally not porn. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> so uh, you were saying something about the boat? Uh, I think we found our boat. The style of the boat matches, the candle wax matches. Ah, perfect. I'm wondering what's in these uh, crates i've got shipping records here i can't make heads or tail i can i try if... the praise roll on yeah. the yeah go ahead nice. Part success. 
So this doesn't seem it doesn't seem like this is a smuggling operation of any kind. Um, this seems like a uh, mass quantities of exotic goods sort of trade mm -hmm. uh, where they, they sort of bring in things that aren't normally purchased or yeah. manufactured here. Um, for what purpose, you're not certain. It seems like most of the stuff they come they bring in comes straight into storage. Uh, it's not indicated exactly what any of these things are. You're just able to sort of indicate, you're able to suss this out based on the, uh, where they're shipping things from. They're shipping things from the Middle East. They're shipping things from England. They're shipping things from Africa. They're shipping things from South well, America. Well, you might be skimping on import taxes, but it's not really a smuggling operation. Lots of exotic goods that they seem just to be chucking into storage. All right. I do have in my inventory a crowbar. Oh, you do. Could I have had that with me? Sure. To open a There's also a crowbar hanging on the wall. No, I'll take their crowbar. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> I have a crowbar. Better you than me, probably. Yeah, I'm going to try and open one. Okay. Uh... <sighs> Is there an athletics? Mm. Give me a straight strength check. Okay. I have a 50 in strength. I feel good about this. 50% chance. Oh, yeah. You put the crowbar in teeth point first rather than single point first which is the appropriate way to use a crowbar you get it around a nail and so that the the, the nail is kind of like the hook and a hammer uh and you pull on it it sticks for a minute you get all of your weight on it basically and there's a sound as you pop one corner of a crate open and as you do fog comes out of the crate Fog. This cold smoke, as if the air has been rapidly chilled. I look in. I peer inside. What is that? Does if I can, like, like a dry ice type thing. Uh, yes, this does seem like a dry ice kind of thing. Which, fun fact, dry ice has been around since the eighteen thirties. Cool. Um, I've learned something. Yeah, I mean, it's just easy to acquire thing, put it cold, but. So yes, it does. So like, it feels like, it seems like dry ice. Yep. So I try and waft it away if I can, kind of like with that one corner open, kind of look in. Yeah. Uh, you look in, and there is a, you make me a sanity roll, because you're not quite certain what you're looking at. Okay. <laughs> There's my critical failure. So as you look into the as you look into the crate, you lose a D10 of sanity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just one. Only one. Congratulations. Thank as you. you see what looks like a person frozen in the dry ice. Except that is not a person. That is a fish person. And that is where we're going to end for this week. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.